I've seen her.
morning, everyone. So Good nice morning. to see all of you. My name is Jenna, Pastor Jennifer Michael, and I'm the pastor here at St. Timothy Lutheran Church, and I'm so glad to share worship with you today. One note, uh, we mentioned this last week in the, in, during the service, during the prayers of intercession. You are invited to kneel using the kneelers on, in the pew if you are able. Sitting is perfectly appropriate as well. If kneeling is not life-giving for you, so certainly uh, know that we don't have kneelers for the choir, so they'll be sitting. So we, uh, we invite you to this uh, kind of uh, practice. We worship with our, all of our five senses and our bodies, and this is another way to embody our worship uh, by kneeling <coughs> during the prayers or sitting. So let us take a few moments to center our hearts for worship, and then we will begin. Welcome. Please rise as you are able and face the baptismal font. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God, who is faithful and just, and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, have, have mercy on us. We confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another with your deed and in true truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin, and so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. With joy, I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also with you. Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Genesis. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless in the heir of my house, Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, this man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, look toward the heavens and count the stars. If you are able to count them, then he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord and the Lord reckoned it to be him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people chosen to be God's heritage. saved by 
the side of the army, nor are warriors rescued by their great strength. A reading from Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised as a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old. And Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this is one as good as dead, descendants were born. As many as the stars of heaven and as innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises. But from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would, have, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to play with, with him, he scowled and said, I'm much too busy. 
Then they ran, with, they ran to their mother, and she would say, Remember the great, the great Proverbs, my son. With money you are a dragon. Without, without it you are a worm. Ooh, that's yucky. Reading upside down is hard. <laughs> and now far away lived a poor man named Lee. And all day long he worked his small farm, but whenever he had a chance, he pulled out his flute and he started to play. And he started to play with his, with his children, too. And they made sounds, they laughed, and they played, and they danced. But this came day in and day out. So day and night, the music and the laughter from Lee's farm re reached Pang in his, in his great house. Then Pang lost count of his, of his counting his coins. And he had to begin again, and he was really upset about it. So he says, hmm, if Lee were rich, then it would make it, he would, he would not have time to play with his flute or to laugh with his children. So guess what? Pang filled a large bag of money with coins, and, and then he went over to, the, he went over in his fancy carriage over to Lee's house and delivered his gift and said, I wish you, should, I want you to share my, I want to share my treasure with you. Please take these gold coins, use them wisely. So Lee could hardly believe his eyes. He could hardly believe he had all this money. But you know what he ended up doing? He ended up starting to go, what should I do with my money? And he wondered, first, I have to count it, right? So then he started to count, but then he began to worry about that he hadn't counted rude enough. And he kept worrying and worrying and said, oh, what am I, what, I've got to hide it. I've got to hide it under a, under a table, or I've got to hide it inside the stove. And then he put it in another place, in the cellar. And then he, he was worried all the time about how he, should, how he should spend it. Should he buy an ox? Should he buy a bunch of chickens? He worried and worried and worried and worried. And there's so, so much worry, Lee began to worry again. What if, I have, what if I have less money than I had thought? And so he wondered. He began to count again and again. And his children said, I'm, so, I'm much too busy to play with you or to, to laugh with you. And, his, and Lee's wife spoke this. She said, remember the great proverb, my daughters, he who has heaven in his heart is never poor. So that's when Lee discovered, I must give all this money back. It's just causing me all kinds of grief. And it's, he kicked the pile of coins over and said, I'm going to give this back. So then he goes back and he looks, he, he felt sorry for, for Peng. Because he said, if Peng spends all this time counting his money, he doesn't have enough time to have fun with his children. He says, I must remember... I must return your gracious gift, he says. The treasure almost robbed me of my happiness. And Pang was so surprised he couldn't say a word. And that's when he said, now please let me share my treasure with you. And guess what Pang did? Uh, Lee. Lee gave Pang a whole bunch of flutes for him and his family to play and laugh together. And guess what he learned? And they laughed and now they shared the tr their treasure. And what do you think the greatest treasure of all was? Their family and the happiness that they shared together. And then they go out right off into the sunset. All, everybody all arm in arm. So what this story reminds us is that our treasure isn't in the stuff that we get in yeah, for Christmas. It's not in this, the money that we have. Our treasure is this community of faith that we have together, this shared church family. And when we remember, when we put God at the center of our lives, then we're able to turn ourselves toward that real treasure, and then we're able to share it with others. Okay, so that's our lesson for today. So you want to join me in a prayer? All right, let's go. Dear God, Dear God help us learn from Jesus how to receive your kingdom so that we can share it with others. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Timing down pretty soon. <laughs>
The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief, thief can, comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But I know this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. A few years ago, or, well maybe it's more than a few years ago, I gave a workshop at a Women of the ALCA Synodical event that focused on how we vision and grow our ministry together. I started out by telling the participants about an article I had read about the National Air and Space Museum of the Smithsonian. In the article, the author wrote about how incredible this place was. He said, in the huge lobby hangs the airplane flown by Orville and Wilbur Wright on that momentous day at Kitty Hawk. Below it stands one of the capsules from the Gemini flights used in the infancy of the space program. Charles Lindbergh's The Spirit of St. Louis is close at hand, boasting its first transatlantic nonstop flight. A sleek, orange plane that looks like a rocket with a few stubby wings hangs in a nearby room. Its silence betrays its astounding accomplishment of being the first plane to break the sound barrier. People do not talk at the Smithsonian, he said. They whisper. They whisper because they are overwhelmed by the accomplishments of the brave, pioneering spirits that occupy that space. They whisper because the dreams of these creative and persistent few have become reality and convict the weakness of a doubtful public. The former pessimism and jeers of a world that said spaceflight was impossible lay quietly but heavily on the floor. In little more than half a century, we had flipped it, we had, history had been flipped on its ear. People could fly thanks to a few brave souls who dared to dream spaceflight was made a reality. Now after sharing this quote, we talked about the courage it took for these people to step beyond the boundaries of what science thought was possible, about how they pursued their dreams with a tenacity that many of us could not even imagine. And then I paused and asked this question. What would you do if you had absolutely no fear? What kinds of things would you accomplish if you lived your life from a frame of reference that your thoughts could literally shape your world? What would you love to try if you knew you couldn't fail? You may have heard that question before. It's often used in strategic planning sessions as a way to get the conversation rolling. Uh, it allows us to push past our present circumstances and consider possibilities what would you do? What would you love to try if you knew you couldn't fail? The problem is that question, that is a question that needs to be asked at the right time. There has to be a certain feeling of security in your current circumstances to make this question approachable. When you are in financial difficulty or if you've experienced a significant loss or even if you are feeling uncertain of what is coming next, 
It makes it more difficult to imagine a future that is more than just survival. To consider a new path that, while brighter, may also be more challenging and more risky. A measure of confidence helps us to take on even greater challenges. And similarly, having a mentor or an advocate helps. Someone to support you. Someone who's got your back and who will encourage you. Provi that provides a sense of security to then let you dare to dream just like those who dreamed of space, fl space flight. When you have that security, it gives you the chance to think of the possibilities on the horizon. And in a sense, that's what Abraham, then called Abram, receives from the Lord in today's first reading. Do not be afraid, the Lord tells him. I will guide you and protect you and give you offspring and a future you could not have imagined. Now, if someone had asked Abram that he, what he would do if he knew he could not fail, I don't know that he would have answered that by pulling up stakes and moving his entire family across the continent. But that's what he did. And that's what vision and promise do. They enable you to do things that you've never previously dreamed of. One could read Jesus' promise in much the same vein. Do not be afraid, little flock. It is, your, it is for, your, for your father's good pleasure to give you all things. And from that astounding promise comes the invitation to prioritize, to share, and to be prepared for whatever comes, and to give things away. Now, it's important to note this word from Jesus is an invitation rather than a command. A command implies coercion, a compulsion to perform or else. But an invitation is to be offered freedom. A freedom that is grounded in God's promise through Jesus. Today in our reading, we hear that we have Jesus' promise that it is God's good pleasure and heart's desire to give us all things. And thus we are suddenly free to give away, to care for others, to lose ourselves in service. It is in all these ways where we find, that, where we find our security and confidence. Not in our earthly possessions or accomplishments, but rather our relationship with God. What an astoundingly different message that is from the one we hear in our culture and from the polarized political landscape that is only growing more divided. Rather than tell us not to be afraid, would-be leaders relentlessly tell us or even shout at us about all the things that we should fear. We have people on both sides of the aisle that talk more about what we should vote against instead of what we should vote for. Out of fear of the other or their agenda. And it is that fear that then, in turn, tends to limit our vision and paralyze our actions, thereby making it difficult to imagine a hopeful future, let alone actually work toward it. As I was preparing this sermon and going over my notes from that long-ago workshop, it occurred to me that perhaps I would ask a different question today. What if I turn this passive question of what would you love to try if you knew you couldn't fail into a more active question. Don't get me wrong, I think it is essential to give people the space to dream of a life without limits, but we live in a very real world with very real challenges. So that made me think that perhaps the better question today is to ask what would we do, dare, attempt, not if we knew we couldn't fail, but rather if we believed that failure didn't matter. Not didn't matter as in there are no consequences, but rather didn't matter in the it's not the end of the world sense. Because indeed, failure happens. The Wright brothers failed many times before actually taking flight. And it took Chuck Yeager six times to break the sound barrier. And in our readings today, we see Abraham who failed. And at times, he failed spectacularly. The followers of Jesus experienced multiple obstacles and disappointments. But they carried on, trusting that their future and self-worth were not secured by their success, but rather were granted and made sure by God's good pleasure and promise alone. Failure happens, but that failure doesn't have to define us. I think that's the beauty of today's message in our gospel lesson from Luke. 
It is a reminder that the primary call of the church is to become a place where people are so rooted in the promise of God's good pleasure that failure doesn't matter. That we are so grounded in our identity as God's beloved children and affirmed in, that, in our inherent self-worth and dignity that we can indeed see all those around us, no matter their age, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, or physical or mental abilities, to see all of them as similarly beloved and deserving of self-worth, dignity, and God's good pleasure. The question for a Christian isn't just some sort of the question for a Christian isn't just some sort of self-actualization, but rather it is an affirmation of the idea that as we give ourselves away, whether that's through our time, our personal abilities, or even our money, when we freely give of ourselves in relationship and service without counting the cost, we find a deeper sense of self than we'd ever imagined possible. God knows that we are born in, to be in community. And thus we find a sense of self and meaning and purpose as we trust God's promises and give ourselves away in love without fear. So this week, as you return back to your everyday lives, I invite you to consider the vocation to which you, we are called as disciples. You are invited to dream dreams. To give of yourself without fear because God has your back. God says to turn away from the pessimism and jeers of the world who want to keep us small and instead go out into this world that needs everything we can give with the sure knowledge that you are armed with God's promises to live into the work that you are called. That work that Jesus proclaims as God's kingdom. You need not fear. Our calling today is to be like one of those few brave souls who dared to dream, who, sh who share our gifts and our passion with wild abandon because of our conviction that we are God's own. That is our call, and that is God's promise. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Creator of heaven and earth, 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your church. Fill all who proclaim the gospel with your spirit. Equip your flock to speak your word of promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your creation. Dwell among us and sustain our earthly home. In places of famine, provide nourishment. In places of plenty, fashion us to be good stewards of your bounty. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your world. Be our helper and our shield in places torn by strife and violence. Raise up courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your children. Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Console those who grieve and embrace those who cry out to you. Especially Eileen, Charlene, David, the family of Beth Wren, Alan and the Fisher family, Jenny, Mark, Sandy, Ed, Linda, Sally, Kathy, Terry, Fred, Claude, David, Paul, Ted, Sherry, Cheryl, Allison, Mary, Maddie, Albina, Frank, Meg, James, and Tabitha. And those we name aloud now or in the silence of our hearts. Renew us at your table of mercy. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The assembly is invited at this time to present other petitions. For our military, police, firefighters, emergency responders, and their families. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For those in East Tennessee who have lost loved ones, friends, your property, hold them in your loving hand and give them peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember all who have died in faith and now rest in you as they place their hope in you. So strengthen us to trust in your promise of new life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share the peace of one another.
Let us pray. Merciful God, everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. again, even as we cry. Railing 
in the direction of the ushers, and then you will receive the host, uh, the bread, and then the chalice will come by and you dip the bread into the chalice. We have a wine in the large chalice, grape juice in the small, and we have some gluten-free wafers available. Come, let us eat, for now the feast is spread.
may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field, and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the announcement. I have this in my leader's guide. I hope all of you do as well. This is uh, for uh, the Lutheran uh, disaster response. We know that our neighbors to the west, east of us in Kentucky, northeast of us, ish, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Geography is not my strong suit. Uh, are in desperate need of assistance. And one of the wonderful things about Lutheran disaster response is it, it, it you know, 100% of the money goes towards that particular, um, that particular need. So please uh, keep that in mind and and, uh, and give generously if you are able. We, I had originally thought that this week we would do the blessing of the backpack, seeing that we just started school, but I didn't put it in the bulletin, so I thought that would be kind of hard to have the blessing of the backpack if I didn't tell people to bring their backpack. So backpacks, lap, satchels, laptop cases, whatever it is that you, that, that you have in service to our youth and our youth can also feel, uh, feel supported. We will have a blessing uh, toward the end of the service, and you're invited to bring those those items with you that day. Teachers and teachers' assistants and anybody who has anything to do with education will ask you to come forward so we can offer our blessings as you embark on this new new year with hopefully no more uh, no more at home study and we can all be together again. That would be delightful and wonderful. There, are, yes, that is next Sunday, the August 14th. So August 14th, it's in the bulletin. I'm I'm kind of telling y'all stuff that's already in the bulletin, but you know this is. Uh, just a little reminder, just in case. There are lots of other announcements in here. I don't need to go over every single one. Youth group has a cookout in two weeks coming up, so we want to make sure that we get some information about that maybe next week. Or do you want to stand up and say anything now? Do you want to wait till next week? Okay, two weeks we've got, so give, give us a little bit more. Uh, we've had a couple of volunteers already to do the recycling, but many hands make light work. So if you are so inclined and would like to take... Uh, so the recycling, our bulletins and things like that through the week. We don't have a recycling uh, system here that we can use, but we know several people in the community have it, so if you would pick it up, uh, coordinate with Ron Morgenstern, and he'll make sure that we get it picked up once a week. Uh, lots of other stuff in here, so I will, uh, again, mention kneeling for the prayers. Thank you very much for participating in that. We, we can keep it up or we can discontinue it. Just, just a different way of worshiping, so it's always good to shake things up and we did have somebody ask we used to kneel why don't we kneel anymore i said i don't know i just got here right <laughs> so so that's why that's why we reinstituted that particular um practice any other announcements for the life of the congregation i've got one yes i'll just come over here hi good morning um one quick thing, handbells. In the bulletin, it says that we are our first rehearsal is this Wednesday. It's actually the following Wednesday, which is the 17th, I think, off the top of my head. Yes, thank you. It's the 17th, so don't come this Wednesday. This won't be here. Um, but but do also, come for choir. 
Yes, do come for choir, though. Choir will also be, will be rehearsing this Wednesday. So choir starts rehears uh, Wednesday rehearsals this Wednesday, and then handbells will start Wednesday rehearsals the following Wednesday. If you'd like to join either, please come. There's a whole bunch of very friendly faces here that would love to talk to you about it. Same thing for handbells. If you're interested, we would take a few extra people. And even if you're just not sure you can commit fully, but you'd like to be an alternate or a sub, because sometimes we have people in and out, love to take you. So thank you. Yeah, if you can count to four, you can play handbells, I've been told. And you have hands. If you have hands, you can. <laughs> yes, and you have hands. <laughs> uh, any other for the. Yes, Jen. So, Reed and I and Reed are coordinating our communion breakfast. And y'all might have seen it in the announcements, maybe a, a, on our Facebook page, that we would like anyone who would like to be part of this ministry to please contact us and actually read out your service is going to be out in the narthex to get your name and contact info and he just heard that so <laughs> <laughs> you've been voluntold Rita. yeah i was going to say i'm a good mom <laughs> um, and you know you don't have to be a baker if your idea of baking is picking something up from the bakery, that is okay too. We just want anyone that wants to be involved to please, please sign up. It, it's painless and it's truly uh, a spiritual experience. So anyway, be ready after the circle. Great. I always say to people, when people ask if I made that, I say, yes, I made it all the way to the bakery counter and all the way to the cashier. So <laughs> you do not have to bake in order to, in order to participate in bread ministry. Just provide some source of bread each week. And uh, it is a spiritual practice. I know that when I do it in, during Lent, uh, there are special prayers that I say. And I think about all the people that will receive such a gift of the sacraments through this humble vessel of bread that, that comes just from my kitchen. So, um, so yes. Uh, one other announcement, because Bridget keeps pointing at me and now I remember, we have birthdays at, in the building. Today is Vicki Lind Linden's birthday, so Vicki, or, no, did I get it wrong? No, I was like, okay. And then the other birthday is Pamela, oh, is Nancy, no, Bonnie, who, tell Nancy, I was like, you're pointing at Bonnie. Nancy was on the 30th and Vicki is today, so can we sing happy birthday?
country actually testing those <laughs> years ago, a couple years ago, and so these books are new though. They're I don't know. I just don't know. My brother died, and I just decided, oh, well, I've been working real hard on it all. Yeah. Anyhow, but I yeah yeah that's what I do most of my days. In fact, we're doing 